Hello, and thank you for joining today's webinar. We'll learn how to develop a custom VUI for children's speech with our partner, General Plus. My name is Anu, and I'm with the marketing team at Sensory, and I'll be moderating and speaking during today's webinar. I'll start with a brief introduction of my fellow panelists, and then we'll continue on with today's agenda. Again, my name is Anu, and I'm on the marketing team at Sensory. Jackie is a marketing manager at General Plus. Jeff Rogers is with Sensory, and he is the VP of Sales. George is a project manager at General Plus. Today's agenda is as follows. We'll begin with cup company overviews, starting with Jackie um, with a General Plus company overview, followed by myself, where I'll provide Sensory's product and company, company overview. Then Jeff will uh, share a demo where he'll create the VUI for children's speech using Voice Hub. And that'll be followed by another demo from George for, with General Plus, who will deploy the VUI into the General Plus integrated circuit. We'll close with a brief Q&A, and those questions can be submitted throughout the webinar. And, um, and that'll wrap things up. With no further delay, I will hand over to Jackie. Yeah, thank you, everyone. I think that's very exciting to work with the Sensory. As the, we know, the Sensory was the best voice recognition offline vendor in our industrial. I am very sure to say that way. <laughs> For some people will know the toy business, know what is the reason. So after a while, we're working for almost like a two year, actually two years before, just right after the COVID-19 was the, just a little before the, the 19, we started to work together. And uh, we actually work with the sensory to put a sensory technology start to put on the general plus highway. So actually, I think that's the very, very good of the combination. So sensory can provide a lot of the IP in the software and the general press provide a hard way to put into the consumer product line. So basically that's the, what I try to explain where is the general press come from. So basically we are a Taiwan based of a established IC design house, uh, AKA like an IC design house. And we actually take a lot of the IC design for the consumer electronic, uh, which is AKA toy and also like home appliance, that's kind of electronic stuff. And the mainly we basically, like I say, we do the interactive toy. We do the electronic education system. We also do the multimedia like AI camera. Also we do a thing like a dash camera for the car recording. And also we do the home appliance and also cell phone accessory like a charger, those kind of system. And uh, you can probably find out a lot of information from our website. So let me just dive into what the general bus actually has. So we actually cut our company into three major of the product line. So basically around like 17 years before, we actually spin off on one of the big design house in Taiwan called Sunplus. So we are a toy department that time. So basically that's the first one in the left corner here. So we are the consumer electronic and we have an 8-bit microcontroller, 16-bit microcontroller. We do like a speech, fresh and light sound. And also we do the black and white LCD control. So that portion as today is still a very, very big portion of the toy business in the worldwide. And uh, in, after that, around like a 10 year, our company started to grow up and we become a published Thai company in the Taiwan. And uh, we start to create a second product line under the hood, it's the multimedia. So that's because people start to use it more and more the color display kind of stuff. And also later the camera, CMOS camera started coming in. So we actually build our 16-bit uh, video SOC to do a lot of the TV again, LCD handheld again. And the later, as today, we start to do the 32-bit the AI chip. So it's the multimedia chip with the AI capability inside. And on the side, we actually have a last third department called MCU. Basically, it's more like home appliance. That's in the, because in the South China, there were so many factories. They have a good assembly capability, but they don't have any R&D. So compare with the consumer and the multimedia will provide a chip and SDK. So our customer or customer's engineer or they hire someone outside can do a design. In the MCU line, basically we more do like a 
turnkey service. So they do like a e-bike. So we are the motor control basis e-bike. We all have had like 60% more of the market share in the China right now for the e-bike controller. And also we do the touch can touch controller for the home appliance, like a LED table light, like a fan, like a air fryer, those kind of thing. And also we have a department doing the wireless charger, which is like a cell phone wireless charger from retail and away go to right now, we actually deliver into like a building market for the Ford and the Toyota. And also we have a very big portion to doing the remote control. So this is like a three different section of product, a general parking maintain. We have around like three to 400 different product under this three section. So let me give you a little bit easy way to understanding what the end product look like. So in the first section, I talking about the consumer. So the LCD can be like a, like a watch, timepiece, can be like a sport meter or calculator. And uh, in the speech and the melody part, we actually did a lot of the toy, almost like a, most of the, the like people in the well-known best sell toy. And also in the low bar side, we also do a lot of the high-end stuff. And for example, we do like a BBA, R2D2, this kind of stuff. And we do the Meccano low bar. So those kind of things actually is one of the reasons we actually dive into the voice recognition because all those kind of interactive product will require very, very good of voice interface. And the second of the product we call the multimedia. So this one from the staff on the right hand side. So basically because we start from like education toy. So we have a lot of the graphic car, color display output, and we have a gaming system. Basically it's a people called PPU. It's like a graphic car inside the chip. And also you can see this is like a Tamakuchi, like VTech watch and also do the, the camera with the green screen. And also we do the HDMI output of the dance mat. So this is where our multimedia line start with. And once this thing start, then it start become into the even high end low bar compared with the first slide. So we do so many interactive low bar, which is including the local voice recognition and the crowd version by the Wi-Fi. So actually they do the mix more. Uh, when the Jeff come in, Jeff will be explaining what is the local THF plus the sensory AI crowd. And also in this portion, we start to go into the high end of the home appliance, like a flow cleaner low bar, this kind of thing. So the reason we do that is because right now the free flow cleaner low bar already have some machine vision inside the chip. And uh, in the turnkey portion, actually because it's camera chip, you can use it for the graphic engine and also the camera input. It also can be using as the standard solution, like a dash cam, like a video conferencing, webcam, doorbell and like a, the video drop this kind of application. So we actually in the China, we have some of like a turnkey service to provide a semi solution for the people in the factory side that can very quick for go to the product. In a certain portion of the general product, basically like I say, it's more like home price. So we actually have a wireless charger. So the wireless charger we're talking about like a standard retail version of wireless chargers, like the thing if you go to the Costco, there was like a, a Love the wireless charger. More than half is general price inside. And also other than the standard wireless charger, we're also doing like a building to the home appliance, building to like a THS handset, and also we do the, the, the auto building market. And the touch sensor, that portion basically is like air fryer, like a thermal cat, the, this kind of thing, and the remote control and the e-bike. So that's kind of like a three major thing of the general price doing. So, let me go into the trick we will be talking about today. I think today we try to do is to say, we'll try to demonstrate how we can run the sensor is the high-end THF algorithm and the output of the model from the database in the voice hub. And so this chip actually is the part we select to start with because they need enough of the CPU power and the red. So we pick our GPM 43 series. This is a Cortex M4 chip inside. We spill in a 128 of the local memory and the embedded external Inside the chip actually have embedded a 64 to 256 DDR memory. And also you can support the name fresh or SD card outside. But uh, one of the major reason we pick this chip is to say because the, when the star we're using the DRAM to make it easy for the porting, but in a long-term low map, this chip actually can run the program directly from the SPI. So that was the possibility we can use like a GPS M41 series, which is no DRAM version, just a CPU. And uh, we'd run the code and the model directly from SPF to make the whole system slow, the cost down, and also make it simple. 
And this chip also including the sound process unit up to 16 channel of the SPU, the sound process unit just like a Sanka. And uh, it also provide like a JPEG coding and a TFT output. And of course, this chip will be supported to up to today's the voice hub and the THF or V6 version. And uh, also I want to mention about like uh, how the whole multimedia product like we are. So you can see this is like a one, two, three, four, five of the major chip series we are selling today for the multimedia. So the GPM44 series is here. So this is like Cortex M4. And uh, when go up, we have the GPM329, which is ARM9 and run 500 megahertz. And uh, the best thing of this thing, they actually got ISP. So if you're, your application require more than an audio, you, this chip actually can come direct from the sensor and go up to the 1080p H264 codec output. And uh, actually this chip is the one BM, this is under developing. So GPA77, this chip basically is the, our newest chip. The, the major thing different than this one, say this is just compressed and displayed. And this one actually can go to AI. So we actually have hardware inside to run the CNN, so support the TensorFlow. And also this one from 2D graphic engine, go to the 3D graphic engine and the Kodak capability up to like two channel of the 1080p H264. And uh, the middle of this chip with other developing because we try to get the something in between these two. Uh, this is a, almost like a sense spec, but this one will be at the TensorFlow into this chip. And uh, below this one, we actually have a GP320 a I think this is one other chip that I was working with the sensor right now. We try to using the s ram inside of the chip. And this one actually run the tiny machine learning model also. So this is a whole library of the what the general plus low map in the multimedia. And today we work with the sensory for the GPM4. And the later we may be done to the 41 or even jump to 328. Okay, so last I have. Jeff, come back. No. Nope. Uh, okay. No, no, Jeff. But I, mm -hmm. um, I will go ahead and provide the sensory company overview, mm -hmm. and, and then we, um, we, I, we will dive into the um, the demo from uh, a brief abbreviation of the Voice Hub demo, mm -hmm. um, and then we'll. Um, hand off to George to show how that VUI is implemented. Okay. So now go ahead and um, give me a moment and I'll share my screen and tell everyone a little bit about um, what we're up to at Sensory. Hello everyone. So who is Sensory? Um, we are, Sensory has been around for about 25 years. We work with major, major companies as you can see from the icons here. We are pioneers in edge AI and we develop voice and vision embedded um, technologies. And also uh, more recently, we now develop as well uh, the sensory cloud. Um, so like I said, we've been around for quite some time and we have had really um, uh, lots of products, billions of products ship with sensory voice recognition. And today what's really exciting is now we have a easy to use and easy to implement um, voice recognition specifically built for children's voice. So what's really, um, and later on we'll show you how we've implemented that to create a voice user interface. So a bit about the technology suite. We have Truly Hands Free, which is our well-renowned uh, wake word and command set um, technology that uh, has been implemented again and again. And this is for typically small command sets and wake words. We then have Truly Secure, which is our uh, biometric voice, uh, uh, sorry, face ID and um, Truly Secure Sound ID, which is which detects home sounds and um, can be pro programmed to recognize a variety of sounds. Then we have truly secure speaker verification, which is again a biometric um, voice specific uh, um, uh, biometric uh, application. And 
Then there's truly natural, which is our large, large vocabulary um, continuous speech recognizer. Um, and we can work with both truly natural and truly hands-free in Voice Hub, which we will see a little bit later today. And Voice Hub allows us to create VUIs quickly and easily using an online uh, online interface. And um, we'll see today how that's used to create a VUI for children's speech. Um, like, uh, as I mentioned, Truly Hands Free has been widely deployed. Uh, it's multi-phrase um, technology that recognizes and responds to dozens of, key, dozens of keywords and phrases and has been deployed um, in, in millions and billions of, of products. And with the General Plus chip specifically, we can run Truly Hands Free Speaker Verification that supports an enrolled fixed wake word and a user-defined fixed wake word with speaker verification. So this, this allows the wake word to uh, be tailored to the user. So the speaker verification in, uh, ensures that the wake word or the algorithm spe recognizes specific users. And we'll see that a little bit later. Um, as I mentioned before, Sensory Cloud is our latest um, to AI, and we have we have full we have speech to text, face and voice biometrics, and wake word revalidation. You can visit sensorycloud.ai and try some of these demos um, li uh, live. And the kids model that we will be using today is also supported in our speech to text cloud, which is really exciting. And the Voice Hub portal, as I mentioned, is an online uh, VUX developmental portal, which allows developers to quickly create wake word models and custom language models for prototyping and proof of concept purposes. This is Sensory's Voice Hub tool. And in partnership with General Plus, I wanted to show you a quick project um, that we can build here. Uh, that all runs on General Plus. So the first thing I need to do is, is start a new project. So you can see that there's a few different options here. We've got truly hands-free wake words. Um, wake words are, uh, can be always on, always listening. They can run low power. Uh, we can have multiple wake words or a single wake word. We also have truly free hands, uh, hands-free simple commands. These are commands that are like a series of wake words so that after the wake word is said, you can say one of these commands. And even if you say other things in and around the commands, uh, they are still spotted. So it, it, it feels like a, a natural language experience. And then we also have our Truly Natural, which runs on a, on a more powerful General Plus platform. Today, I'm gonna focus on Truly Hands-Free, these two. So the first thing I need to do is create a, a new project, a new custom wake word. So for the demo, we're gonna use uh, Pikachu as an example. So I'll just call this uh, Pikachu for my uh, project name. Um, then I select the language that I want. You can see that there's a lot of different languages uh, that are included in Voice Hub. And in fact, we've also added US English Kids. So for a, a, a toy product like Pikachu, I'd, I'd want to use US English Kids for my, uh, for my language. So I select that. The next thing I do is I select the size that I want. This is the acoustic model size uh, uh, for the technology. The larger the size, the more accurate but it also means that it requires more MIPS and memory, obviously. So it depends on the platform that I'm running on. In this case, for a, a low cost toy, I wanna to use a very small size like the 80 K byte model here. And then the other thing I do is I, I choose the output format. And so here I just choose our, our partner General Plus. And now I'm, whatever I create here is going to be automatically formatted for General Plus. Um, you can also see that I've got operating points here. So operating points, a single point or all of the points. A single point is going to be faster as far as the build time. All the points is going to take a little more time, but it basically builds a frontier graph with false rejects on the, on the left side and false accepts running across the bottom. And what the tool does is it, it auto-generates all of this and creates a, uh, a model that's pretty well balanced between false accept and false reject. So Voice Hub is a tool, again, that, that we can use to create these custom wake words 
there's no data, there's no recordings, there's no language touch, there's no hand tuning, there's no speech technologist. I literally type it in, hit build, and I have a custom wake word. So here, I'll type in the wake word. Now, if I type in a Pikachu like this, I'll type it in like this, Pikachu, which is how it's spelled, and hit enter here. And then you'll see over here this little speaker icon. This will this is going to play back uh, TTS basically of what the recognizer is expecting to hear. So let's listen to this. So the the recognizer based on these these letters here, it doesn't sound what I'm expecting it to be. So instead of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to phonetically spell this a little bit differently, like that. Pikachu, and then I'll uh, hit enter. Pikachu. Okay, so that sounds like what I would expect. So here you can see that um, I'm I'm phonetically spelling it because it's a it's obviously a made up word or or a proper noun I guess in this case. So once I'm done with that, um, I've got everything I want, and you can see here that I can enter more wake words. So I can have up to ten different wake words, always on, always listening, if I wanted to. For this project, I'm just going to do the one. So here I'm all done. I hit build down here. Once I hit build. Um, well, let me show you the process here. It's going to come up and it's going to say, uh, you know, here's here's the SDK I'm using. Here's the name of the of the project. I'm doing it for US kids. The size is 80k byte, and the format is for the General Plus uh, M4 base chip from General Plus. Once I hit continue, it'll take 40 to 60 minutes to build that uh, that custom wake word. So rather than do that, let me just jump ahead. It's already built and I've already got it uh, in, included here. So the next step is to, is to create my command set. What do I want this, uh, this product to recognize? So here I can, I can, again, I'll call this Pikachu commands. Um, I can select the language that I want. So in this case, I'll do US kids. I've already selected the wake word because I already created that in the last, uh, in the last uh, uh, project. And then I can create the size that I, I'll select the size that I want here again. So, you know, I can go really small, I can go bigger. Um, I'll do 128 for this one here, 128K byte. And then again, I've already selected the general plus chip. Um, so now I come down to commands, I just type in the commands that I want, like uh, thunder shock. And then I just hit enter to go to the next one, quick attack, uh, discharge, thunder bolt, wild charge and how about thunder storm type in those commands those are the ones that i want so same process go down hit build in this case for a command set like this it'll take probably a couple hours in voice hub server um, to create that that command set and so the, and this is all part of truly hands-free so once uh once so i hit build and you can see again all the details. It's you know he's, these are my Pikachu commands. U.S. English kids. The size is 128k byte again for General Plus. Um, so rather than do that, I've already got it built here. And uh, so here we have it. Here's my Pikachu commands, and uh, the wake words already selected. The commands are already in here. Um, and so here I can uh, I can download the model. And there's two ways to, to test this. One is I can test right here. Um, on the on my PC or Mac, and so I can I just hit connect to media device and I can test there, or I can download the model. And if I download the model, there's two options here. Um, first off, you can see the total size of my project is 251 k byte. So that's got the 80 k byte uh, wake word and the 128 k byte uh, command set, I believe. Um, so two options here. One is using my mobile device. I, um, Android or iPhone, I can just scan this QR code. And over here, you see my, my mobile device and you can see that it's on and listening right here. So this is our Voice Hub APK that's running on my Android phone. And I'm just screen sharing my phone over here. So in a minute, I'll scan this and show you how I can load that project in. Or the other option is I download the model. Once I download the model, then I send it over to, to General Plus. And uh, in a minute, you're gonna see how George takes that model and then can integrate it directly into the General Plus hardware. So you can test immediately on General Plus, or you can test um, on, an, on a uh, mobile device. So in, in this case, I'll use the mobile device. So I take my phone, um, I hit uh, uh, scan QR code, 
I just scanned that QR code and you can see that it loaded it from Voice Hub into my, uh, my prod, into my mobile phone over here. So now I can do quick testing where I can say, Pikachu, Thundershock. And you'll notice that it recognized the wake words and then it recognized the command set. But I said that kind of in a more engineering kind of testing way. But real world, people are gonna say things like, Pikachu, um, I want the Thundershock right now. And even though I said the wake word and I said that I want the Thundershock right now, as I mentioned earlier, because this is all phrase spotted technology, it recognizes the wake word. And even though if I have other things in front of, in front or behind the commands, it still recognizes it. So this provides very high accuracy without the need for an actual NLU engine running. Pikachu, um, discharge. So the uh, can obviously, a lot of times can just destroy a recognizer. In our case, it doesn't because of that, that phrase spotting capability. Pikachu, I want wild charge. I probably said it a little fast that time. Pikachu, I want wild charge. So again, uh, just, you know, spots the wake word, spots the command set. Hey, Pikachu, give me the thunder attack. So in a very natural way, no problem at all. So this is all based on truly hands-free running in our voice hub tool. I've created a, a, a wake word. I've created a command set. Um, I've downloaded that command set into my mobile phone over here. Um, and again, as I mentioned, I can also download this into, uh, into the General Plus tools. And everything I've created here is formatted automatically for General Plus. So I don't have to do any extra steps. I don't, it, it's, it's, it's a really nice solution for keeping it very easy and fast. So one of the thing I wanted to demonstrate is our new sensory cloud. So this is very different. So the sensory cloud is a, is a uh, we, we introduced this at CES and sensory cloud includes several technologies. One is speech to text, which I'm gonna show you a demonstration of here in a minute, but also our biometrics face and voice, as well as wake word revalidation and sound ID revalidation. So working with our partner General Plus, uh, we can run a wake word on device, very small, and then I can revalidate in the cloud. Or I can, I can run the wake word on device, very small, and I can then go to the cloud uh, where I have full-on speech-to-text dictation. Now, the beauty of sensorycloud.ai is that our cloud, we can actually provide the customer our container, and they can run this entire thing on their cloud. So it's as far as kids and privacy and security. We remove all those hassles, allow the customer to run this directly on their own cloud. So again, in partnership with General Plus, we, we run the local wake word. We can even run the local commands if we want. And then we can, we can link to the cloud. So here as an example, um, we've got different languages already supported in here. As you can see, there's, there's several different languages. I'll stick with US English. Um, and then once, uh, once I hit the, the, the start button, Basically, this is, you know, the toys heard me say, you know, in, in this case, Pikachu, and then I can say, you know, whatever I want. So as an example, we'll, we'll, we'll pretend I'm, I'm using the, uh, the wake word on General Plus, and I say, Pikachu, this is a really cool product. I can say anything I want, and this recognizes it. And then you can see everything that I said was recognized. Or now that we have this capability of speech to text, I can track kind of sentiment through text. So if I say something like, uh, as an example, Pikachu, this is really stupid. I hate this toy. So you can see here that it recognized everything I said, and we could actually go back and analyze this thing and say, okay, well, look, they said stupid and they said hate. So we know that the, the in, in this case, in, in a toy application, the kid's not happy with something. And so we could, you could actually structure the software very differently to, you know, to try and improve the relationship or have different types of things going on. Um, and then again, because it's completely open, you know, I can literally say anything. I want to make a red racing car with cool yellow stripes down the side and have it go really fast and make some cool noises. So everything that I said, totally recognized it, uh, total speech to text, and again, this can run in a sensory cloud. This can run in our customer cloud. This could even run on-prem if we needed to. So this is all part of sensory. Um, I started with Voice Hub, which is a tool we created that allows for very fast development of custom wake words, custom commands, and even natural language grammars. And then also our new sensory cloud, which provides 
full speech to text dictation, which can link nicely with an on device solution. This is all from Sensory and in partnership with General Plus. Thanks, all. So I'm going to uh, use the General Plus IDE to uh, import the files that uh, Jeff provide uh, just before. So let me jump into the IDE. Let me share my screen right here. So I'm going to import this files uh, to my project. So I'm just going to add the necessary files, which is like a six files. And then I'm going to build the project. Review up. So this is uh, ID is uh, GCC based tool chain uh, development system, and which you can edit, uh, compile, download, and debug in one place. And then afterwards, you can um, download the code through the G plus link pro probe. So then we already download, uh, we already built the, the project. Right now we are going to uh, download the code to the emulation board. So it's downloading and verifying. So I'm going to stop my share screen and then uh, switch to the emulation board here. So as you can see, the, the board has a lot of uh, interface, which is like a camera, the TFT, HDMI, and USB, and S. D car, UR, microphone, deck, et cetera. So today we will mainly focus on the voice recognition and we'll do the recording from the microphone and then do the recognition and then output the wave files from the SD card. According to the phrase uh, it, will, it detects. So let's run the demo. This is sensory voice recognition demo run on GPM4. Say the wake up word, the kachu, to start voice recognition. So firstly, you have to uh, uh, say the trigger word and then following the, the command. So once the trigger word is detected at the, the red LED will turn on and show you at the it is the uh, wake up. Pikachu. Thunder shock. Thunder shock. So you will play a little bit uh, a sound effect uh, depending on your Say application. Say the wake up word Pikachu again. And then if you are uh, like a uh, no detection for the Say trigger the word, word Pikachu for again. a few seconds, then you will sleep. Pikachu. Thunder shock. Thunder shock. Bring it on. Quick attack. Quick attack. I want you discharge. How about Thunderbolt? Thunderbolt. Come on, wild charge. Wild charge. Thunder attack. Thunder attack. Yeah. 
So basically, uh, this is the, the, the demo is show you that uh, it will spot the, the keyword and then the spot the command, the phrase, and then play the, the, the sound effect uh, automatically. And then it has a very nice uh, response and then a very um, well recognition rate. So let me uh, head back to the Anu. So I see there's a question and San is going to answer that question live. The question is, what is the difference between English kids and normal um, English in terms of a recognizer? So San? Yeah. Uh, yes, the kids version, that's mean uh, while we gather the data from, from the world, from the, for example, US guy, uh, we mainly for in case for normal version we mainly include uh, adult data and some young as uh, some uh, kid data but for the kid version we would the percentage of the kids data you dominant uh, the <clears throat> more uh, for some up to 70 percent something like that and so this uh this kind of this so at the end this version more Cover covering more about the kids sound because uh, you know the kids sound is quite different from the adult. So this is uh, this mainly target for for the kid version. This is the purpose of distinguish normal and the kid version. Is it clear? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Jackie. So I just try to share some of my sound. I think. Uh, the major difference between the, the voice hub is uh, you can see from the ends demo. So they have actually the database there. You can do the wake up wall and the also the command just by the typing. I know in the phony best, they, people always say that, but uh, that's the must. They actually have a better of the database and you can select like a keys version and also the adult version. So mm -hmm. for example, like when George is doing the demo, actually George tried to insert a lot of the different scene other than just the command set, you can see the, the stable of the response. So basically the, the keyword spotting is much, much better than what in the before. And uh, probably I can walk through a little bit. There was a couple of Q&A I already answered in the section. So the people are asking, what is the, what kind of audio processing can be performance in the SPU being at GP43? So basically the GP43 have a built in, a, we call a sound process unit. You can see it's like a 16 channel of the sound processing car. So each of the channel you can define and mix different kind of thing. So the codec we have provided is like a PCM codec, ADPCM codec, and also we provide like a A1800, A4800, which is the general process version of a subband coding. Because the, in the, this kind of application, a lot of the time we can use the MP3 codec, but the most people for the that small speaker, they actually have a concern about like the quality will never get out in that speaker. So they want to make the code size smaller. So we actually provide the 1800, which is the 18 kilobit per second mono. And the 48 is the 48 kilobit per second in the studio of the codec. And the, it, other than the audio, straight audio, it also supports the standard MIDI. So you can put the MIDI file into the chip and the decoding by a library and the timber library, which is the sound source, can be ADBCM or PCM and the file like a, like a ADSR format of the MIDI. And then the second question is talking about what is the standby color of this thing? Yeah, I know that's the kind of question people are always asking. So based on the demo right now we are doing, we try to run the CPU low to around like 100 megahertz. The chip can go up to like 192 megahertz, but in this THS demo right now, we only use like 100 megahertz. And so each of the CPU and the clock setting in the VRAM will be changed based on what which IP you want to turn on and turn off. So in the demo, the George just show is around, it's around just a little bit about 100 milliam. And uh, it's always we can add some of the circuit and outside like amyloid detection. So we can be using like a wake up by the, the audio or even we can put some PR in the front. So basically you can have a multiple stage, like you can have a CPU hole sleeping and wake up by the amyloid of the audio, or you can someone walk by and the PIR sensor wake up the CPU and CPU immediately go to the full speed of running and pick up the wake up wall. And when that stage is like 100 million for the operation. And uh, let me see. Oh, 
uh, there was a new question coming for where is the development system? <laughs> okay, so basically, I think uh, for the developing system, uh, we can provide, like George been talking, that thing is to say, we can, let me see. So basically, uh, we will be provided SDK, including the hardware emulation bowl, you can see in the demo. And uh, also we have the, our, we call the G plus link, basically it's our JTAC tool. And also we provide a full function of IDE based on the GCC. So that's a free to download from the General Plus website. Uh, but I think you still need to contact our local sales, for example, me, <laughs> to get the old SDK, including uh, we call the platform code, which is a big package of the demo code, including how to enable each of function inside a chip for the hardware. And we have the demo code for each individual application and also the driver, L1, L2 driver for individual hardware. And let me see. If you want, let me see. If we want to using the testing GP sub encoding quality, how can we record an audio file? Okay, so basically we have a, a tool in our website called the APC Converter Tool. So you can input any web phone, like a 44.1K standard web phone, and you can convert into the, each of the format I just talking, including the ADPCM. We actually have a multiple version of ADPCM, like a standard four bit uh, modified five bit or the PCM 66, those kind of thing. So we have a software offline. You can convert audio file into the format we, we need to. For example, you want 800, so you basically just drag and draw a lot of the audio file into that tool and you can output it with a .a1800 and it can break back by our SDK have a library. And let's see how much MC resource are using. Uh, actually, George, do you know the answer about this one? I think the, this is question, how much CPU resource are using? Uh, the resource and the command, I don't, I still have uh, not a very uh, uh, specified uh, data. So I can uh, share the, the data after I, uh, I get the, the command or the, the CPU calculation afterwards. Um, actually, uh, in case, uh, depend on the size of the model, because uh, we can allow the, the customer select a different, different size, model size. Uh, maybe they want to have a, a simple version or easy one, they may select a smaller model. Under this situation, I believe that the processing power is about um, 20 megahertz, something like that. And then in case they want to have a big, bigger models and then uh, very complicated, maybe they will lead to up to uh, 50 or 60 megahertz, something like that. So we can calculate the, the, uh, the processing power and also the power consumption under this way. Uh, and then um, suppose us, uh, uh, Sensei and, and uh, Jennifer will provide just data later, okay, in a better format. Okay. Now, um, I will go ahead and um, put some links in the chat to everyone. Oh, okay. It looks like we have one more question. So it says, could the solution pick out the kids' words in a noisy environment? Um, does I'll let someone on the panel take that. I will say that I know that sensory models work great in noise. Um, and if we uh, trained our data, uh, trained our models to work specifically for kids, um, I'm sure it works. Um, I'm sure it works great in noise, but um, that is my instinct, but I'll let someone with some experience with model uh, follow up with that. Um, maybe I can give a reference uh, information about the signal to noise ratio. Uh, for normal noise, because it's uh, very typical noise, I, we can't see this one because uh, the uh, sensory model chain up with many typical noise source. And then the signal noise ratio is about uh, 6 dB to 9 dB. So, uh, and of course, some really 
typical lois uh, our cellular lois ratio can be even lower but uh, i think this good enough uh, most of the situation we can handle our uh, model in the office environment this is no problem the the my distance is about two meters something like that but of course, yeah, you are in a very typical Chinese restaurant, then maybe it has some problem. But uh, we can handle this uh, in a specific case. We can talk with the customer in a, in a uh, better manner to understand their concern and something like that. Yeah. We can, uh, we could provide some uh, uh, professional opinion. And actually we also have a lab uh, in Sensory. We can provide some service to ha handle this kind of noise issue. Yeah. Yep. And San is mentioning our internal testing system that we have um, with Vocalize, and we can tune models to customer customers' needs. So, um, if 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 uh, we want to make sure that the model works in a noisy environment, we can work with our customers to do that. Yes, it's the way. Yeah. So I think that's just about wraps things up. I want to thank everyone for joining and for bearing with us today. Um, and uh, we'll see you next time.